Question 15, maybe the most fun of the practice problems for the Praxis 5165 test is a geometry problem where we have to figure out the length of BC, this pink line segment right here. And what we're told is that O is the center of this circle and the radius of the circle is two. Therefore, line segment CP is a diameter and has length four. And we're also told that AP is tangent to the circle and has length three. And as you may guess, the fact that it's tangent is really important. That ends up telling you that this is a right angle here. I don't know, maybe that's obvious, but if it's not obvious, maybe you can orient your circle a little differently. If your diameter is vertical and you extend that tangent line, maybe you can convince yourself that this would have to be a right angle. If this weren't a right angle, if it were acute, for example, that would mean you could place a ball straight down on a flat surface and it would just start rolling down to the right. That wouldn't make any sense at all. Anyways, hopefully you're okay with me calling this a right angle. So how do we solve the problem? Well, the trick is to set up similar triangles. The way you're gonna set up similar triangles is you're gonna draw line segment BP. If you stare at triangle BCP, it might look like a right triangle. Turns out it is, but it's dangerous to just assume this is a right angle without knowing why. The reason why is a special case of what's called the central angle theorem, which is handy enough that it's worth reviewing. So the idea with the central angle theorem is you start out with the circle, or at least best I can draw, and you pick any two points on that circle. It doesn't matter where they are. Maybe I'll put them here and here. Sure, we'll call those A and B. Two points on a circle define a major arc and a minor arc. The minor arc is kind of the short distance between those guys on the perimeter of the circle, and the major arc is the long distance between those guys along the outside of the circle. If you pick any point on the major arc, it doesn't matter which one you pick, somewhere, I don't know, right here, sure, and call that C. The measure of the inscribed angle at C is always going to be half the measure of the central angle defined by A and B. Wait, what? Okay, label the center of your circle here. The idea is we're going to use A and B to create two different angles. One angle at the center and one angle at C. The angle at the center is, well, you guessed it, the central angle. Maybe I'll call that T. And the other angle is what's called the inscribed angle. Maybe I'll label that S. What the central angle theorem tells you is that T is always twice as big as S. So if I know that S is 30 degrees, T must be 60 degrees. If I know that T is 80 degrees, S must be 40 degrees. The central angle theorem just tells you that the central angle is twice the inscribed angle. There's lots of implications here. If I move my point C, I don't know, down here somewhere, maybe I call that C prime. A and B are the same, so my central angle is still the same. But now my inscribed angle would look like this. Since my central angle is still the same and S is still half of my central angle, this measure must also be S. This angle is the exact same as this angle. And that's true for any point on the major arc. Even if I put it way over here, really, really close to A. There's my central angle. Here's my inscribed angle. Maybe I should switch that color. This angle right here also has a measure of S. There's lots of animations out there where you can kind of drag the point C and you see the angle stay the same. Anyways, that's called the central angle theorem. It's pretty useful. A special case of the central angle theorem are when the points A and B are diametrically opposed. They're opposite each other. The line connecting A and B gives you a diameter. Here's my circle. Here's A. Here's B. They're straight across from each other. So when I talk about the central angle, I'm talking about a 180 degree angle. This measure right here is 180 degrees. Now if I take any point on the major arc, and note because these guys are diametrically opposed, either side counts as the major arc. So pick any point I want, C over here. I know that the inscribed angle at C is going to be exactly half of the central angle. The central angle is 180. Half of 180 is 90. A consequence of the central angle theorem is the inscribed angle defined by two points on a diameter is always a right angle because two points on a diameter will always define a central angle of 180 degrees and the central angle theorem tells us that the inscribed angle has to measure half this 180 degrees. It's a pretty cool fact and it's often useful. It's worth reviewing, it's worth memorizing. I memorize this guy and then just remember this is a special case. This guy's not as hard to memorize as you'd think. Before I made this video, if you asked me if the central angle was the one that was twice as big or if the inscribed angle was the one that was twice as big, I wouldn't know. But it's easy enough to draw the picture and then you can just see that the central angle is the bigger one, the inscribed angle is the smaller one. Anyways, with that information, we know that this angle is 90 degrees because C and P are a diameter. So the central angle defined by C and P, this right here is 180 degrees and the inscribed angle defined by C and P is half of that 180 degrees, AKA 90 degrees. That's important because now I have these two triangles here and it'll turn out those triangles are similar. Might be a little bit hard to see in this diagram, so let me redraw them. I got triangle APC 
and I know that the length of PC is four, that's because PC is a diameter and the radius is equal to two. And I know that the length of AP is three because that's just given in the problem. I know that this triangle is a right triangle because AP is tangent to the circle here. And I know with right triangles, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So this length must be equal to five. Rather than even calculate that, it's a good idea to just memorize that a three, four, five right triangle is a thing. I got another right triangle in here. It's right triangle BPC. If you kind of reflect it and rotate it a little bit, we can orient it so that it lines up with this triangle. Length BC shown in pink is what I'm trying to figure out. Maybe I call that X. Length PC is the diameter, as we already talked about, so that length is four, meaning the hypotenuse of this right triangle is four, because the angle at B, thanks to our fancy central angle theorem, must be a right angle. I think I mentioned earlier that these triangles are similar. Similar triangles are just two triangles where all the angles are the same. One's just a scaled up version of the other. And that's what I have here, because we know they both have a right angle. These angles are the same. And then the angle at C appears in both of these triangles. So this angle must be the same as this angle. And since the sum of the interior angles in any triangle is always 180 degrees, if I used up 90 and whatever this is here, what I'm left with down here is the exact same as what I'm left with down here, because I've also used up 90 and whatever this is. These triangles are similar. This is just a scaled up version of this one. How much bigger is this one than this one? Well, in the big triangle, the hypotenuse is five, but in the small triangle, the hypotenuse is four. So this one's 25% bigger than this one. That tells me that four must be 25% bigger than this X right here. Maybe an easier way to write that is the ratio of the hypotenuses, I don't know if that's a word, is five to four, this five compared to this four. And that has to be the exact same as the ratios of these sides, four over X. Solve this equation for X and you're done. Solving this equation for x is pretty easy. Multiply the x up to the top here, the four up to the top here. I got five x is equal to 16. Divide both sides by five. I got x is equal to 16 fifths. In other words, a little bit more than three. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. This hypotenuse is a little shorter than this hypotenuse. So this side is gonna be a little bit shorter than this side. Roughly three, yep, sounds good. Annoyingly, the answers are given in decimals, and so I guess you just pull out a calculator, or if you don't feel like pulling out a calculator when you're making videos, you'd call this 32 over 10, which is just 3.2. 3.2 is answer C. The answer to this question, I'm done. It's worth pointing out that there's also something apparently called the tangent secant theorem, and apparently you can use that to find this side length X more directly. I had never heard of the tangent secant theorem, or if I have heard of it, I've certainly forgotten. I think it's a fairly obscure theorem, and I don't think it's something you'd ever need to use on this test. I wouldn't bother with this way. The central angle theorem is a fairly useful theorem. I would memorize this one because I could see that being useful for geometry.